Hi guys, so as you can see, I'm finally back in uniform again. Really, really happy about that. And the reason for that is that I'm going to do my three takeoffs and landing. So I'm actually outside of the uh, CAE Sim Center here in Barcelona, uh, where my company has rented a simulator. We're not normally here, but due to the current crisis, um, well, they found the simulator and we were able to use this, which is really, really great. Um, Three takeoffs and landings, yeah, so every pilot that are going to fly with passengers need to have done three takeoffs and landings in the aircraft in the previous 90 days. Um, if you haven't done that, you are not allowed to take passenger flights. So that can be done either in the real aircraft, which is normally the case, because unless you're normally working, you will easily get your three takeoffs and landings, um, or it can be done in a simulator and for the first time in my almost 19 year career, I have to go into a simulator to do my three takeoffs and landings. So that's what I'm gonna to do today um, in here. It's a very quick thing. It's going to uh, it's going to be a normal flap five takeoff, level off, radar vector circuit, hand flown ILS approach into uh, runway 28 in Dublin. And then we will reposition, do another takeoff. Then we will fly around again for a non-precision approach, a localizer approach again from a 2A to land. And then another takeoff and a non-precision approach followed by a circling approach. So we could do this just normally with ILSs without an issue, um, but the company has decided to, to, to kind of do different, three different types of approaches in order to, um, to maximize the training value. Then I will hand the controls over to my first officer. He or she was going to do exactly the same thing to get there. Three takeoffs and landings. It's going to take about an hour. And if there's any time left, then we will do um, some extra, extra exercises, which might be, for example, uh, engine failure after takeoff, uh, could be high crosswind, could be a raw data approach, which is when you fly without the flight directors to help you. Everything to kind of get yourself back into uh, normal working order. And um, yeah, um, it's very, very important that you do these things because 90 days without flying has a real potential of making you very, very uh, rusty otherwise. And even though that would quickly dis disappear as you start flying, if you fly a day, you, you're gonna be fine again. You can't be rusty because you never know, you know, that engine failure after takeoff or that uh, technical issue might happen to you on your very first takeoff after, uh, after you come back after a stay like that. So it is really important. Uh, I find it really, really encouraging that the airlines um, do this, that they are, you know, really, really taking this into account, not only because it's a legal requirement, but, but because it's the right thing to do. Uh, my airline have, for example, chartered aircraft to fly pilots in from different bases where there are no simulators to simulator bases in order to get this done with as many pilots as possible. As we're starting to ramp up now, as we're starting to see that the passengers want to come back flying. So this is really encouraging news. I'm really, really happy to be here. So happy to be back in uniform again. And uh, yeah, I'll show you a little bit about uh, what we're going to do here. So that was awesome, guys. Now, I wasn't able to film inside of the simulator for two different reasons. A, I had not asked for permission to do so, and I did not want to show um, my two colleagues to everyone on the YouTube channel without their permission. Uh, and B, because there was just no time. Like, we had to do six takeoffs and six landings in 60 minutes. Now, that might sound like a lot of time, but it, it really isn't. So we started off just doing um, a normal takeoff and a normal ILS approach. I disconnected early and I just flew the whole thing manually. Then uh, I did a, another takeoff, but with 33 knots of crosswind, um, a localizer approach with 33 crosswind as well. 
and then after that another takeoff and a circling approach. This time the instructor thought it would be a good idea. Now I was flying together with a synthetic flight instructor as well. So there were two SFIs, one instructing, one sitting next to me and me in the left seat. So he thought, eh, let's spice things up a little bit. And he decided to on the circling give me an engine failure as I was turning on to final as well. Now, it is possible to continue an approach providing that you can stay stabilized if you get an engine failure or final and that's exactly what we did. So I remained with flaps 40, which I had. I could keep the speed, I could keep the, the descent profile onto the poppies and I just landed with the engine failure after the circling, which was really interesting. So we had time to do that. I also had time to film some great material that's gonna appear in coming videos about toga buttons. So I hope you're gonna like that. But all in all, uh, it's been a great day. It was really, really lovely to be back in the, um, the cockpit again and to see some colleagues and to do some actual flying. And surprisingly, I wasn't that uh, rusty. A little bit rusty, but perfectly okay. So now, next time, it's gonna be in the real aircraft. I'm gonna go out and do some technical, uh, technical flying just to, you know, take a 737 around the circuit and keep it up to date uh, from a maintenance perspective. And then we're gonna go and get the 737 that's gonna be based here in Girona and start operating again on the 1st of July. Right guys, I really hope that you liked that. If you want more content like that, more aviation content, well then, check this out. Uh, I hope that you have subscribed to the channel and that you've highlighted the little notification bell. See you inside of the Mentor Aviation app and have an absolutely fantastic day. Bye-bye.